Now let's talk about friction. Definition of friction is a force that opposes motion between two surfaces in contact. Friction depends on the nature of surface of contact. It does not change with different pushing forces or speeds. However, it is proportional to the pressing force between the contact. Friction always goes against motion. If the block is trying to go to the west, friction would push it to the east. If the block is trying to go upwards, if there is friction, it would push downwards. Over here we see a block. If there's a force pulling it, if there's something pulling it over here, you may sometimes feel a certain sense of like graininess at the bottom that is trying to pull back. This will be called the frictional force. Note at where the arrows are drawn. The arrow is always drawn from the place where it pulls from, like the block over here. However, the frictional force only acts when there is contact between the surfaces and therefore the arrow has to be between the block and the wooden table. And it's drawn like this and with an arrow head over here. So looking at um, a foot of a guy trying to walk forward, foot is actually trying to push backwards. Like this, the man is trying to push the foot backwards. So the force on the foot is backwards. So friction will actually act against the force and go forwards. Now there are both positive effects and negative effects for friction. Some positive effects are that they are needed for walking, they're needed for holding things, they are used in braking pads to slow down cars. However, some negative effects is that friction causes wear and tear. They will cause when things rub against each other um, for a long time, they would actually wear down. They also reduce engine power and they reduce efficiency because a large amount of energy is wasted as heat. So now let's try this example. A force of 5 Newton acts on a mass of 2 kg, which also experiences a frictional force of 3 Newtons as soon as it begins to move. Find the acceleration produced. Okay, so now let's go through the solution. We need to get the resultant force first. The resultant force on the object would be 5 Newtons minus 3 Newtons, getting you a final of 2 Newtons to the right. So using the formula F equals to MA, we convert it into A equals to F over M. So the acceleration would be 2 Newtons of force divided by 2 kg of mass getting me 1 meters per second squared of acceleration. Now let's try a slightly more difficult question. A man pushes a box which has a total mass of 20 kg across a floor at a constant velocity of 0.4 meters per second by exerting a horizontal force of 150 newtons. Now please try to solve the three questions below. You can pause the video here. Let's go to the solutions. So what was the resultant force on the block? Constant velocity implies zero acceleration. Because if there is a constant speed or constant velocity, it means the speed does not change and therefore the acceleration will be zero. Hence, because F is equals to MA, and if A, the acceleration is zero, the resultant force has to be zero newtons. I ask you, what is the frictional force on the box? So from the previous question, we knew that the resultant force was zero newtons. However, we see here that there's a pushing force of 150 newtons. Therefore, to get the resultant force of 0 newtons, the frictional force must be exactly the same number of newtons as the pushing force, so that these two will be the same magnitude but in opposite directions. Therefore, 150 minus 150 will get me 0 resultant force. So the frictional force has to be 150 newtons. Lastly, the situation changes. The box now is made to accelerate at 2.5 meters per second when previously it did not accelerate. So what is the pushing force now? Previously it was noted that the frictional force does not change. The first solution is that we need to find the new resultant force on the box. So F is equals to MA and since the acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared, we multiply that by the mass of the box, 20 kg and that should give us a resultant force of 50 newtons. Friction will be the same as the previous question, which is 150 newtons. This pushing force minus this force over here should give me the resultant force. Therefore, putting it in an equation, the pushing force over here minus 150 newtons should end up giving me 50 newtons of remainder force. So rearranging the formula over here, my pushing force will be equal to 50 plus 150 newtons 
getting me 200 newtons. Force was increased from 150 newtons before to 200 newtons now.